Hello, you absolute legends. How are you? Welcome back to the channel from a beautiful afternoon here in Lincolnshire. And I'm in my back garden today where we are going to be looking at this. It's a W30 Mark III Toyota MR2. Um, it is the facelift edition, i.e. it is after 2003. So it has a little few different nuances to the Mark one and it's one I picked up yesterday uh, I saw it for sale on Facebook it actually belonged to a friend of mine an acquaintance somebody that I used to go to school with who uh, sadly passed away um, about 20 months ago due to some complications so this car was uh, his pride and joy and I saw it on for sale and I contacted his widow who I actually know uh, as well through misspent teenage youth and friends of friends um, and it was nice to see her again but a shame in such sad circumstances anyway we fixed a deal and I uh, ended up giving this MR2 uh, a lovely new home after being sat for about 22 months since uh, his sad passing so it is a little bit of a bittersweet video but obviously she was happy that it was going to go to a good home and get a little bit of attention as well because she is aware of the YouTube channel so what is it then it's a 2003 Toyota MR2 Mark 3 why is it so special well this is the last of the Toyota MR2s they didn't make any more after this this is the last one and it's the roadster it's the spider in some places and it is the convertible version so uh, it's not got a hard top however a hard top was an optional extra the car then uh, is totally stock standard apart from the wheels uh, which have been changed to suit the previous owner's um, taste so uh, the, the gentleman who who owned it, who I bought it from, uh, the, the gentleman he bought it from previously is the person who put those wheels on. They're not to my taste, however, they sort of go with the car, but I'm not a fan of black wheels on anything. Uh, but we'll talk about wheels later on in the video. Um, it's covered just over 41,500 miles from new, so it's quite low mileage, and it's had four owners before me with the gentleman who I bought it from buying it in 2018. Registered Oop North, uh, it's a Newcastle car, it came from, uh, I can't remember the dealer but the details are in the book, it came from a dealership uh, up near Newcastle Way. And uh, in this video then we'll have an in-depth look at the car, have a look around it, have a look at any issues, damage uh, and talk about something that I have noticed is wrong with the car <laughs> uh, and then we'll go from there. So at the moment the car has no MOT. Um, it, it, was, it was brought back to me uh, by a friend of mine on a ramp uh, on a flatbed and uh, I obviously have only driven it on private land and it has no tax, it's currently sawned and uh, obviously for that reason it's, uh, it's, it's not been anywhere. Um, it needs an MOT. I had an MOT booked in. More about MOT bookings in in another video later on on the channel. It's finished in this lovely metallic grey colour with colour coded wing mirrors and uh, black vinyl roof and black leather interior. We'll take a look then around the car. You can see that on the front bumper, there's no damage. It's not damaged in any way, shape or form. This here is actually uh, just a little bit of, I don't know what you'd call it, polish. Uh, it's been polished recently before I purchased it. Uh, it was looking beautiful. Uh, and uh, in the, uh, the fog and the dew overnight, that's, uh, that's leaked down off there. Uh, so the front bumper looking good. No major issues on there. One thing I have noticed is the fog lights have sort of, I don't know, got all this stuff inside. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's some sort of corrosion or whatever, but the plan will be to take those fog lights out and sort of tip all that nonsense out of there. It's done it both sides. But no damage on the front bumper and actually no major stone chips on, uh, on anything. The front lights have gone a little bit hazy at the top here. That's something I'm going to obviously address with a headlight restoration kit and some wet and dry and some, uh, some polish. It's a never-ending thing, plastic headlights. Once they start to go, 
once you start polishing them, you're going to keep polishing them till the end of time. Um, they didn't really suffer with rust, these Mark III's, unlike the Mark I's and the Mark II's to some degree. So, wheel arches looking nice and tidy, no major issues there. And of course, we've got these Team Dynamics alloy wheels, which, um, again, are not to my liking. There's some damage to the tyres um, here and here. And actually, someone has put metal uh, valves on here. Uh, valve covers. This one comes off nicely. I do know that the other three do not. They are stuck on. That's an issue that we're going to have to address. And um, if you remember with the uh, Audi, that one. Uh, no, not that one. The other one, the silver one. We had to um, cut those off, so that'll be a job for Dad, sadly. Looking down the car, no major dinks or dents. In fact, one of the good things about the car is it hasn't got many dents in it at all. There's a couple, uh, and there's a couple in places where I'm not going to be able to get them popped out, but it's really not the end of the world, and only I will know that they're there. Looking here, then, we've got these mud flaps. Um, I would suggest they need coming off. And looking behind, because there's some dirt and debris behind there, um, that's going to be something that we will address. But the sills and the skirts and the sides are all good. There's no issues here. Uh, there's no rust or rot on any of the sills or on the bottom of any of the doors. And the car has been kept... Uh, not garaged, but covered during its lifetime. Um, so the passenger door, no major issues here. We have got these aftermarket sort of rubbery bump stops. Um, there's something I'm going to remove. I understand why they're there. It's to stop this corner being damaged, but they're not to my liking. And I actually don't think they go very well on a sporty car. So they're going to come off. They'd look good on your uh, Morris Minor. Maybe not your Minor, but on something uh, a little bit more... OAP, shall I say, uh, but not on, on this car. We've got this side intake. This is a plastic piece uh, that goes into the engine bay. And we've got the fuel filler cap here. Again, looking at the rear wheel arch, no issues, all good, all fine. No blisters or blebs anywhere and uh, all looking good. As you can see, that's not going to come off there. That is corroded. That will need cutting off and you can see that the car has been stood for quite a while just by the condition of these brake discs and these brake pads brake pads are fine by the way it's just these brake discs are quite worn uh, and uh, and dirty i suppose once the car gets running and going that will semi clean itself off but you can see just here on the on the wheel just how much uh, those have been sort of binding and the dust is coming off on uh, on it being um, I suppose driven and moved about recently. Take a look at the back, no major issues here and because it is the MR2 it's a mid-engine so this is your engine bay, your uh, uh, boot is technically at the front. No damage, no issues here, you've got the lovely nice and bright badges, you've got Toyota MR2 Roadster and lots of intakes here on the back and grills as well. Has been bumped here on this corner in that um, lady who owned the car, uh, gentleman's widow, uh, bumped it slightly and it's come off a peg here. That's not a major issue, and if I'm honest. It's literally undo a bolt, push it back in and screw that back in. So I don't see that being a major issue at all, it's not damaged anything. There's actually no damage to this uh, this bumper. It is literally just a, a knock and a pop. Um, I think here is probably where it's scuffed it the most. You can see there's a slight scuff there. Um, but again, wheel arch looking fine. No major issues, no rust. I'm gonna run my finger along there. All good. And the tire on this one looking nice as well. Automatic aerial, fully working that is. I was very surprised by that because they normally fail on these. And uh, we've got this sort of vinyl plastic roof with a glass heated rear screen. And on this roof, it's, I must admit for the age of the car, it's fantastic. There's no rips, there's no tears, there's no marks. It's absolutely immaculate. So that is a big selling point for the car and a big plus. 
looking at this side, there is a slight mark on this door. It's almost as if bird lime, bird poo, has eaten into this paintwork here. Something I'm going to try and um, get out, but it's uh, eaten quite nastily into that lacquer. But that is uh, a bit of a shame about the car, but not a major issue. Again, looking at these sills here, looking good, looking good looking good all the way along there to here we've got automatic window uh, wing mirrors and automatic windows as well we'll pop the hood down in just a minute's time one thing i do love is this made in japan sticker that is uh, left on from um i suppose the manufacturing process front bumper again it looks messy but it's not it's just a case of that is where there's been some um polish and it's it's ran and it's sort of stuck between the metal and the bumpers with a bit of a wash and I have not washed this car and um, it will come out and this light is one that I've given a little bit of a polish just to see if it comes up okay with some Meguiar's plastics and that's probably what's in here as well we will have a look at removing the roof we'll take the roof down and then we'll have a look at the interior so the roof is a manual roof it is not an um, automatic roof, so you do have to pop it open, and you've got to mark, put these little mirrors down first, these sort of things down first. And there's a button here that you press. Ugh, this comes down, and this lever comes out. It's very much like the... Um, oh, what's the word I want? The MGTF and the MGF as well. So obviously, much easier with two of you, but it's just me... <laughs> Inside we'll have a look, as I say, in just a minute's time. Push this button, pull that down, these pegs come out, we can pull this forward, and then in theory, the roof should retract. And uh, it clips nicely into place. So the roof pushes, folds down, into place. I need to just put a little bit of WD-40 on these hinges, I think, because uh, it's just just a little bit resilient and then it snaps into place and there is your roof and you can see then with that we can pull forward again these visors and the other one pull it forward and that locks that into place and you will now see that changes the car's dynamic in that the roof is down um, I like the fact that it doesn't need a tonneau cover, that the roof retracts and sort of gives you this wonderful, I don't know what the word is, effect <laughs> on there. So I've got both the doors closed and I've actually just popped the two windows down now so you can see the uh, effect, so to speak, when you've got... Um, the roof down and the windows down and I must admit it does really add to the look of the car it looks a bit naughty doesn't it it looks a bit <laughs> it looks a bit Porsche-esque from the side is that just me what do you think or does it just look like a Toyota MR2 um, right so we've got the roof down let's take a look inside we'll start with the passenger side leather interior which was an optional extra on this you could have had fabric this comes with the monogrammed uh, leather seating no rips or tears to the leather effect seat or the leather seat which is good not much wear either doors um, quite sporty we've got this sort of plastic trim here this grab handle this sort of silver effect here it is like a plastic um, and a tweeter in the door here and a main speaker uh, and then we've obviously got your uh, pushing backwards and forwards on your lock um, we've got passenger airbag here and we've got a glove box here what's in the glove box well some stuff at the moment we've got some leather wipes we've got some locking wheel nut tools and uh, in there actually was all the documentation for the car as well. Here is the pull button 
for the front. So uh, we've pulled that and you could hopefully hear that release. That is to release the front bonnet and we'll have a look in there in just a moment. Tailored floor mats, these are the original tailored floor mats um, and the seats pull backwards and forwards the usual way. And behind those, if you pull this lever, it pops forward, is your first piece of storage, which is in here. You've got this drop-down storage box. What are you getting in there? Well, not a lot is the honest answer. And here's a little bit of the roof that we have folded in. Here is a like an acrylic um, visor. This folds up. It's a little bit of a design failure, really, because if you've got tall people driving, like me, well, you can't pop that up without having to move your seat forward. So that, in my opinion, is a design flaw. You've got this area here, this area here, uh, where you can put all your bits and pieces, a bit of luggage for the weekend, maybe. But actually, I've got the toolkit in the other side, and there's not much more room in there. We'll push the seat backwards, and it just locks into place. And as you can see, when it's back fully, you can't get that visor open, which is a big shame. That's the passenger side then, and due to the way that the sun is facing, I'll do the bits and pieces in the centre console from the other side so you don't get any shadow. Come around then to the driver's side, then we'll have a look in the front, then we'll have a look at the engine bay, and then we'll start her up. Same on this side, same sort of thing. We've got monogrammed MR2. On the mats here this is sort of in uh, a white fluff i think unless it's been put in uh nope that's sort of i don't know what the ironed on maybe so you wouldn't want to give that too much of a blast one thing i do like is these sort of stainless steel effect pedals they're quite cool um and these uh clip in but the clip here is broken in fact let's clip this one back in it should clip back in Come on, in you go. There we go, it clips in like that. Uh, I'll to hold that into place. And that sits under there, so I'll need to just get a new clip for here, but that's not a major issue. Lock and unlock, that stops. Um, you'll be able to unlock the fuel filler cap, which will pull, and the bonnet release, uh, the boot release, which is actually the engine bay release. Whilst you are uh, have got the roof down, so you can lock that, that's with the key. And uh, same again, driver's seat. No major rips or tears. You've got a couple of bits of scuffing here on here. I've actually got some black leather dye, which I'll be treating um, that with, just to hide that little bit of scuffing there. One thing I did notice is these wires. Can you see these wires look going to the seat belt? They're quite tight. I would hate for one of them to break, but that's very tight, that is. Um, window uh, controls are here, automatic up and down. Obviously, they're not going to go at the moment because the key isn't in. Leather handbrake, up and down. Come on, there we go, up and down. And the gear knob as well. This is actually the six-speed version, which is quite rare. Um, in fact, actually, I'm going to be totally honest with you now. I didn't think it was the six-speed edition until I've just looked at this gear knob. Um, I thought this was a five-speed gearbox, which makes this car so much more rarer. <laughs> I didn't realise. That's brilliant. Uh, reverse uh, to the side, and then one, two, three, four, five, and the extra six. That is an absolute billy bonus. Didn't know about that, and that's made me quite happy. In fact, I'm going to show you my happy face. Yes, six speed. <laughs> there you go, got to see my fat face. Um, right, so in here you've got your normal controls, you've got your hazard lights at the top, you've got a digital clock, you've got your recirculation here on the right hand side. No aircon on here, which is absolutely unbelievable considering someone has spec'd this to the nines and not put aircon in. I suppose that was quite expensive. You've got your Toyota CD radio and you've got your uh, six disc radio as well. It's got a six disc changer in here, which is brilliant. Uh, you've also got uh, a trip navigation, computer, bits and pieces, and all sorts of stuff. And here, oh, I thought it was a push. You've got a double cup holder. Yeah, you have for all your cups. Put your double cups in there. And for some reason, you've got another cup holder here. So you can have three cups on the go. Winner, winner. In here, ashtray. It's never been smoked in the car. And let's have a look at the cigarette lighter. Oh, it's been used. It has been used at some point in its life, but um, as far as I'm aware, the car has never been smoked in, so it could have been used for, I don't know, 
lighting other things. Um, looking at this, we've got your indicators left and right. You've got your light control stalk here, and here is your um, window wipers. And actually, your clocks here are quite busy. You've got your RPM in the centre. You've got your speedo off to the left, and your everything else to the right. You've got a big thing that says fuel door to the left. Not sure we needed a big thing that said fuel door. You've got your fuel gauge and you've got your temperature as well. Left and right electronic mirrors. You've got your brightness up and down. This is your fogs. You've got your locking windows to stop people from locking your windows and you can unlock and lock the car with this here. So let's put that on lock before we end up deadlocking the car. Um, yeah. That's that, let's take a look at the little cubby hole behind the driver's seat. It's the same as the passenger, but it's got the original toolkit in there. And again, visor issues there. Uh, let's put the key in. You've got a bing bong to say that the key is in. Let's turn the ignition on, and I'm gonna turn the radio volume down so we don't get canceled by YouTube, but show you that I've got the automatic aerial popped up. Let's turn the blowers off, save some battery. But yeah, we've got a six disc CD player here as well, which I didn't know about until the other day. Um, I won't start it up yet. We'll start it up in just a minute's time. There is boop, the uh, automatic radio. We will look in the boot or the front first and foremost. And this is where I wonder how to do this. Here we go. Uh, this is under the frunk. MR, Midship Runabout, which is what it stands for. I will put this peg in and then we'll have a look under here. And under here, it's mainly quite plasticky. Scrivets held in place. There's one missing here, but that's not a major issue. And under here is your little cubby hole area. And actually in here, you've got a... Uh, spare wheel it's the space saver wheel it's got its original jacket on as well which will say toyota on which is nice that's all in place there's not much space in there if you uh, want anything else is there washer bottle brake fluid fuses not much under there is there i think toyota probably could have done something a little bit better with this but um I do like this midship runabout. That's a cool little thing, cool little feature that. Now to look at the engine bay. This is where the magic happens. Again, I'm going to have to open the lid. And on my Mark I, because uh, it's an early import, the holder is on the left-hand side, but on this, it's on the right-hand side. So I'll uh, put the bonnet prop in and we'll have a look under here. Halford's battery that is absolutely cream crackered, it's no good. So at the moment, I'm gonna to have to jump start the car off to uh, start it up. We've got a little VIN plate here, information plate. Um, we've got the VVTi 16 valve engine here. And there's your dipstick. Some would argue he's behind the camera. And there's not really that much going on under here. You've got your air box here uh, into your engine, you've got your drive belts, and your exhaust is under this cover here, this blanking plate. Has got an aftermarket exhaust, and uh, let's talk about the exhaust. It's blowing. Um, we don't know why. I don't know why. Dad's going to have a look at it. He's going to see what the issue is before we uh, send the car for MOT, because it won't pass an MOT currently in the uh, state that it's in with the exhaust blowing. I think that it's probably just not been fitted right. Again, aftermarket exhaust. It's not the end of the world, um, but it's something we can fix. And then you've got your coolant bottle here. Uh, last thing then, I will start the car up. You can hear it running, and that will be the end of the video. I'm going to have to get my jump pack, as I say, because uh, the battery is totally flat. Jump pack's on. It's in place. I'm going to just lay it down a little bit so it's not uh, rattling about when I start the engine. And I'll just start it from being in out the outside. Make sure we're out of cog, which we are. And you can hear already <laughs> just how throaty that is. Take my jump back off.
put it to the side and I'll let you listen to that engine. No idea where that blow is coming from. It is quite a bad uh, exhaust blow. But am I panicking about that? No, I've got a Toyota MR2 with 41 and a half thousand miles on the clock. What did I pay for it? Well, I'm not gonna tell you uh, out of respect. However, it was a lot less than I think you're probably expecting. Um, if you were to double the number, you would have 3,000 pounds. Let's put it that way. There it is then. Mark III Toyota MR2 W30 purring away semi-okay <laughs> because it does need a little bit of TLC long term is it going to stay in the fleet well no is the honest answer um, it's not something I can keep but it is something I wanted to rescue and have a little bit of a summer blast with because it's the sort of thing that I've always wanted to have one and I've always wanted to scratch that itch so I'm going to put the proper alloy wheels on it I do have those now, I've bought a set, more about that later. I'm going to get it nice and tidied up, put things back that are missing, such as that scrivet and the back bumper that's hanging off a little bit, get it MOT'd, maybe enjoy it for a couple of months and offer it to a loving new home. But I think it's an absolute credit, and an absolute beauty, and I am proud to say that at the moment it's mine. Have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. If you've enjoyed the video, let me know. It's a long one, I can only apologise because there was a lot I wanted to cover. Maybe in one of the videos I'll be taking it for an MOT and uh, getting it tested and getting the uh, exhaust back on properly. Have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. You're all absolute legends. Thanks to everyone who's followed the channel so far. Take care. Goodbye.